I still succumb to, you know, have shortcomings sometimes when say something is just too right. disrespectful or something is just, I let it get under my skin or something like that. And then that's when the rage and all my, my the beta can come out of me. I'm not yeah. going to lie. And so now that you have forgiven her, apologized for resenting her, hating her, being angry, uh, you can now just give her the finger and go and live your life. I, a few years ago, I got divorced and I was uh, drinking pretty heavily ever since I did it. Uh, I haven't had one drink. Well, I've had a couple, but um, it's been two weeks. I don't even have a desire. And so um, did you start drinking as a result of the divorce? Oh, Maury, thanks for calling. No problem, sir. I'm uh, based in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm 23. I've been watching your show for like about six months on and off. Yes. And I just want to say I definitely, you know, I salute the, I salute the information you pass it down. I'm a uh, part of Gen Z. And, you know, to be so young, I do struggle with anger and, you know, then, you know, my beta ways from my mother and stuff like that. But I do look at your videos and then I just take it in and, you know, I really see the truth in it. And I don't really try to, you know, judge myself or get caught up on the thoughts. I just try to keep it moving. Nice. Stay practical as possible, like you say. Yeah. Have but you gone and forgiven your mother? I've, I've attempted to. I will say that. I've attempted to. I've tried to show, share your content with my mother. My father did take to the content, but I will say my father is very beta. And he has a lot of women ways and tendencies, and he hasn't really overcame his mother personally. So it's kind of hard for me and him to really connect. But I don't have any hate or resentment against both of them. But I do want to, you know, while they're still on the earth, make amends with them if I can. Not really have a relationship because I'm kind of different. My father always told me as a kid, be a leader, not a follower. So I always try to just, you know, roll with what I think is best. I am a conservative. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, but I am independent. I just always try to think of any situation, like, you know, how, like, with my mindset first, think from my own brain, not think of or recite what I hear from somebody are you, else. Are you black? Yeah, I'm black. He black. He black. He black. <laughs> and so yeah, why haven't you brother. gone and forgiven your mother? I, I've attempted to, but my mother has a lot of anger, and she has a lot of baggage, and she had a rough life for her own, and she really runs from it. Like, when I, when I said this type of contact with her, she'll get mad about it and, because it's the truth. And, you know, the truth is consistent, and a lot of people don't like to hear that. Especially, you know, they want to, especially in today's society, they like people to make excuses for them or use escapism or, oh, you know, call you crazy and stuff like that. So it's like I don't really – I've already accepted my mother is who she is, and she's getting older. And, you know, we kind of think differently. Like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I have an LLC myself. When you, I am say, a young that, father. When you say that you are tempted to – Go and forgive her. What do you mean by I attempted to do it? Well, I'm not going to say it. I made an attempt as in, you know, I know you say don't, you know, don't apologize or don't ex- don't expect them to, you know, apologize back to you. That's not the point of it. But the point of it is for you to actually acknowledge the fact that, you know, I am, you know, I'm sorry for hating you, mom. And I understand where you're coming from and where you got it from. And I told her that and she, you know, she couldn't digest that, which I understood and I already anticipated. But. It's just like I still wanted her to understand. Like I'm not saying it to be out of spite. I'm saying so, it because that's really what I mean. So you me went to, to your, my freedom. So you went to your mother and you said, "I'm sorry for resenting you." No, I told her I'm sorry for hating you. Right. And yeah. what did she say when you told her that? She said, "Why are you telling me this? Where is where is where is this coming from?" But my mother always knew that. Like I've always struggled with my anger and stuff like that that I do get from my mother. Yeah. Because I was around her more more than my father. My father was in my life. But and so, like anyone, any male that has anger is a female. So for you sure. went, you went to her and said, "I'm sorry for for hating you," and she asked, "Where are you getting that from?" And what'd you say right. then? I said, "From from you, this learned behavior that your mother passed down to you." Nice. Because my mother was forced. And to, why do you need her to understand it? And whether she understand or not, she didn't bother you either way, because right. your mother may love her hell. And so right. I don't understand if you did it, why are you saying you attempted to do it? I feel like it was an attempt just because I still struggle with, like, my own thoughts, you know, getting trapped in my own thoughts and not being still all the way. I do practice a silent prayer, but I'm not habitual at it. But I do get what you're saying. Like, I shouldn't even say attempt because I did make the gesture to actually, you know, take the first step in the right direction by acknowledging that I need to overcome my mother to, you know, learn myself. You are, are you doing the silent prayer every morning, every night? Not every morning, every night. I work overnight. Like, I'm literally, I just work 16-hour shift. I just took a shower. Oh, I, and I was calling you, waiting to get off, um, waiting oh. to get on the line with you while I was in the shower. So, and, uh, and are you, li- how old are you? I'm 23. Are you living with your four. mother? 
No, I moved out two weeks after my graduation. Beautiful. And so now that you have forgiven her, apologized for resenting her, hating her, being angry, uh, you can now just give her the finger and go and live your life. That's true. You're right about that. And I have my mother. Actually, we haven't spoken about over a month. Honestly, I'm not even gonna lie to you or my father because, like I said, he has a lot of beta ways, and he like I've introduced him to your show. But what he likes to do is, if I introduce him to new information, he wants to like try to em- like embody the information. But he's not learning it. He's just right. reciting what he hears. Well, that's so, well, that's why you just and don't impose. You you offer them the information, you give it to them if they want it. Fine. If you don't fine, and if they sure. reject it, you just still move on. Because sure. most people, you are unique, and they're in the in. It seems to be in all families. There's like one or two of the kids who are in the family, right. but they're like set apart. They're not for sure of the family, and so sure. you can't impose. Don't impose it on them. Just go on and live your life and become suffer and die. You will That's become it. a living example of it. So just live your life and let them go. If you talk to right. them, hey, how y'all doing? But no big deal, right? Sure. For sure. And I did have one more question. Yes. What what would you suggest? Because I do hear you always say that, you know, no no man can rec- you know, reconnect with the father as in the you know, God if once they get right with their parents and then or just, you know, forgive their parents and then move on with their life. But aside from that, when it comes to relationships, my my question is because my mother was very uh how should I say? She was definitely promiscuous but openly promiscuous, so I can kinda I inherited some of those traits as when it comes to some coming to the flesh. And I do want to, because I had a child out of wedlock and stuff like that a year after graduating high school. But aside from that, you know, in my current relationships, I just want to practice like really getting to a point of when I'm ready for marriage. Like I do, I do want to do it the right way. not have premarital sex, and, you know, build a bond. And I've had my own thing going on. My woman has her own thing going on. We, you know, we build it up that way, the right way. But a lot of women, when I say that, you know, they'll laugh or they don't, you know, like they're going to try to, you know, trick you into just falling for it. Like, oh, what are you gay or what do you have a problem with you? What do you mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Here's what you do. Now that you have gone and forgiven your parents, do the silent prayer morning and night because mm-hmm. now you have the light of God inside of you. And the light will destroy the nature of the devil the Mm -hmm. abnormal nature that you were living when you were angry. And that nature included sex and judgment and ideas and all kind of crap. And so what's going to happen is the light will destroy the nature of the devil. And what that means is that all your ideas about yourself and God, all of those, uh, the sexual desires and all that will be taken away from you. Then... If you should get married, if when you're dating, you're going to have control of that. The woman will not be able to seduce you because she will no longer be your God. And God right. will take away her identity and give you his identity. And in that, right. you will be under control. But you got to, I recommend that you do the silent prayer, you know, stay present, practice being present. So For that sure. when Satan tempts you with the idea of having sex or whatever, you may right. just see it and resist it by letting those thoughts go. For sure. I really appreciate this phone call, Jesse, and I do plan on coming to the show. I've been to Cali one time. I'm definitely trying to come back out there. My birthday in January, so, and I'm All definitely right. trying to be a frequent caller, and I do want to join Bond. Okay, well, do the silent prayer and just watch, right? And For when sure. you're dealing with anybody, women or men or anyone, just watch what you if you're feeling nervous on the inside or anxious or anything, For sure. and just know that that's not you, and, mm-hmm. and you see it, and, and in seeing it, it, the light which is allowing you to see it will destroy it. You you absolutely right though because I do practice that in certain you know in smaller instances I do try to practice that throughout throughout my day to day movement. Yes, but you know I, I still succumb to you know have shortcomings sometimes when say something is just too disrespectful or something is just, I like to get under my skin or something like that. And then that's when the rage and all my, my the beta can come out of me. I'm not yeah. going to lie. So mm-hmm. you absolutely right. I do just need to be still, be silent. And a lot of things you just, the Lord presents it to me. Like as soon as I just be cool, calm, absolutely. cool and collected, it's like, wow. Okay. I see what you're saying, Jesse. Yes. I see what you're saying, God. You understand? Yeah. I Stop overreacting. And one thing I want to exactly. tell you too, before we run here is that 
the real you, the real Omari, has never been uh, insulted. You've never been embarrassed. You've never yeah, been. That was my ego. It's all ego. Yes, it's the fate you. It's the not you. So when yes, someone sir. says something to you or does something and you feel a sensation from it, just know that's not you and be glad that you see that and let it pass. Don't blame them for making you feel that way because it's for already sure. in you and they gave you an opportunity to see it for so them, you can overcome yeah. it. For sure. I really appreciate it, Jesse, man. It means a lot. Like, you really got me damn man tears. Like, I always, I've always, i always watched the show, and I introduced a lot of the Fallen to your show, and I'm still a, fall, a part of the Fallen, but like you said, at least I'm conscious, and I'm not trying yeah. to make excuses for myself. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. I appreciate your call, Amazing. man. Have a, good, have a good day, man. I'm definitely going to stay tuned into the rest of the show. Right on. Appreciate you. You too. Thank you. Amazing. See, folks, there are blacks and whites and everybody who are seeking the truth. I run into them all the time. It's amazing. It's just that they didn't know. No one ever said, you got to overcome your mama. Anger is evil. It's abnormal. It's not the way a human being should live. You are your world. Nobody else is your problem but you. Take control of your own world. And you're going to see human beings for what they are. They're going to blow your mind. You're going to wonder, how did I see it the, the other way? The wrong way. How did I see it the wrong way? You're going to see things about human beings that you're just not going to. It's just going to be, it's just, you're not going to believe that you thought one thing at one time and you were afraid or you thought you need to be this and that with them. You thought that and when you see that they are nothing, they are just nothing. <laughs> they are they're trash. And you thought you made trash important. Do you make the trash at your home or out there in the trash can? Do you make that important to you? I hear you saying no. What do homeless people do? So why do you make human beings important to you? Why? All they do is bring you misery. False happiness, which is misery. Fake unha unhappiness, which is misery. And yet you make them your God. But wait until you get to know yourself and see what's going on. All that will automatically change. And you're going to be like, what the? And man, when you overcome your mama, the spirit of your mother, which is not her own, it's the spirit of evil. Everything's going to change for you. And you're going to deal with women in a way that's going to blow your mind. You're going to deal with them the way you should. You will not be controlled by them. You will not be afraid of them. You will not think you got to have one. You, it's going to all change. And then the ladies in 50 years would appreciate it because now they can have a chance of coming out of their hell. Because the women are miserable today. Miserable. And no matter how they dress, naked, walking up and down the road, they're still miserable. All of those yoga ball butts they're bought, it bring no peace. Sean. Yes, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, I was just calling to uh, thank you for all the advice, uh, overcoming mama. Amazing. And, uh, it, yeah. It took over. It took uh, a few times of uh, trying to go there for some reason. Every time I'd go there, most of the time she'd be home. But then, when I was set on going to apologize, all of a sudden she had stuff to do, or she wasn't there, or she would avoid me because um, I think she knew. Did she? Did you uh, tell her I want to talk to you about? I want to apologize to you. No, but. Uh, I would uh, go stop by my parents' house and watch her videos, and um, she would just roll her eyes and make sounds. <laughs> and uh, uh, my dad devil. would be like, yeah, right on. But I told him I was going to uh, apologize to her, and he probably told her. Oh, uh, yeah, because you're not supposed to tell him in advance. Yeah, no. Because they, they will and, uh, run and avoid you because they don't want to lose that control they have on you. Right. 
And so yeah. they would not make themselves available for the most part. Yeah. Uh, but then I I can't get them apart. You know, they're always together. So um, I just showed up and talked to them, and uh, the devil was busy trying to make me emotional before I did it or while I was trying to do it. Right. So I had to stop and uh, compose myself, and then I got through it, talked to them both at the same time. Um, and they just thought, well, yeah, if it makes you feel better. <laughs> but it wasn't about me feeling better, and I didn't try to explain it. That's um, right. Right on. I just I just left it at that. And uh, I, a few years ago, I got divorced, and I was uh, drinking pretty heavily. Not really daily, but, you know, once in a while, like once a week, or you know, I might have a couple beers or whatever, but um, it got to the point where I would drink a 12-pack and didn't even know. Didn't realize I was just not paying attention. And then uh, ever since I did it, uh, I haven't had one drink. Well, I've had a couple, but um, it's been two weeks. I don't even have a desire. And so um, did you start drinking as a result of the divorce? Yeah, I think I was just didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah, I understand. Oh, you have uh, kids with this woman? No. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Um, and, you know, I was going to tell you, too, like, I kept trying to do the silent prayer. I've been listening to you for, like, eight years. And it took Whoa. me this long to... Yeah. But then uh, I couldn't do the silent prayer. I just could not do it. I would try. But ever since I uh, forgave him a few weeks ago, I've been doing it morning and night without even effort, not even trying to do it or being, you know... Yeah. What was, well, I mean, I'm mindful of knowing that I need to do it, but yes. I haven't stopped. Nice. So, what was the problem? What was keeping you from doing it before you went and forgave? Uh, probably making excuses, and then um, I'm working two jobs right now. I, I bought a house a couple years ago, and there's stuff I want to do, so I just picked up an extra job, and i just been busy with that over the last year. And uh, But before that, just excuses. Oh, okay. And now you're doing it, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, stay with no it. No now. That's right. Stay with it. Stay with it. And it's going to be amazing. Are you? Have you overcome that woman that you divorced? Uh, that was kind of a question. I, I don't really uh, think about her, like, you know, during that time, trying to get her back and trying to do all that stuff, but... Um, I just kind of gave up on it, and I don't really think about it too much. Nice. Or really at all. Yeah. Now that you uh, do it. That was my question. Should I talk to her and forgive her or no? I don't know. I mean. I don't really have anything about it. Right. If you don't have anything, then no, I will move on, stay away from the devil. And yeah. don't try to bring her back because you're bringing evil back into your life. Oh, no, yeah. And if you bring Definitely. if you bring her back, she will completely destroy you. Because yeah. you already know that she's evil. Why would you bring evil back? You want to overcome evil and to never bring it back into your life again. Yeah. But now, yeah. There, if you don't resent her, you, you know, she has her issue. Her mama, she need to overcome as you did. So I would yeah. just move on, work on my life, wish her well, but go on with your life. Don't keep tempting the devil. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Stay with it, man. Let me know how it goes. I will. I will. Thank you. All right, buddy. Bye now.